Well, hey guys, Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango W3CT, your good old friend Jack. Out here at a different park today. I'm actually working uh, uh, right in the area of Hillman State Park. It's, I think it's 1360, US 1360. But that's not about what we're doing today. It's not about the activation at all. It never is with me, right? Today we're going to be working with a new antenna. And it's actually a buddy of mine. I've been watching his YouTube videos for as long as I can remember, as long as he's been putting them out. And he goes by Ditwit. Ditwit Portable Radio. I know, I should have looked this up, right? I should have looked this up. You're like, hey, Jack, you're a bad YouTuber. Anyway, today we're going to be doing... I just want to make sure I got his name right here. Oh, come on. Yeah, Ditwit's Portable Radio. Ditwit, D-I-T-W-I-T, Portable Radio. We're going to build an antenna that he was recently using on one of his last videos. But I'm not going to do it exactly as he did. This is going to be totally new, a cheaper way to build it. And I'll tell you what we're building right after this. All right, guys, so what we're building here today is going to be with speaker wire, because you know I love to use speaker wire. We're going to be building the KJ6ER. That's the call sign that, I guess, created this antenna. It's a POTA Challenger. Now, traditionally, if you go watch Ditwit's channel, and I'll post a link in it in the description below, there'll be a link for his channel and for the video where he actually shows this antenna. <laughs> He builds it, and, and I guess it's traditionally built with a telescoping whip. I believe it's a 25-foot telescoping whip. And for 20 meters, you need 5 feet 9 inches of a wire on the ground, okay? So he explains this to be uh, like an off-center fed dipole. But it's kind of weird because you're using a 4 to 1 unun and not a balance for this. So what I'm going to do, though, today is we're going to recreate it. Uh, the more inexpensive way, or the less expensive way. Come on, Jack, I can't talk today. Anyway, what we're using is, here, let me show you this. Speaker wire, as you see, I have a bunch of it because I had that 203-foot wire up at my house, so a bunch of speaker wire. Tape, you use some tape there. I have my 4-to-1 unun right here. You can see where it says 4-to-1 unun. Okay, that's what this is. Tape measure to cut the wire, strippers to strip the wire, and we're going to be using the crappy pole that I showed you a few videos ago. I actually showed you a cheap, inexpensive mast. So we're going to use this, and we're going to tape the wire onto this mast, okay, onto this fishing pole. And then I already set up my PVC pipe over here. I'm just going to simply slide it into there. I hope this works out right. And see if we can't set this antenna up. And I was just thinking it might be a little too long for what I want to do. But, you know what, I'm going to go for it and try it anyway, see if I can't make this work. So I'm just making an inexpensive POTA Challenger, okay? We are setting up for 20 meters today. I will be activating on 20 meters. And I'll show you the match uh, when I get this put together. So let's go ahead and get the wire cut. I'm not going to show you that, just simply cutting wires. The first one's going to be 25 feet. I'll try to get that onto the fishing rod. Okay, I'm going to use the crappy pole. Because if I can't use it, I'm going to have to use the DX Commander mast. But I think that'll be okay. And I'm going to cut another ground wire, 5 foot, 9 inches, and just lay it on the ground. All right, let me go ahead and get started. All right, so I got the first wire cut here. This is 25 feet of 16 gauge speaker wire. That's all this stuff is. So I'm going to start taping this to the top of the mast or the fishing pole and see if I can't come down the side of that pipe because I don't want the wire to be inside the pipe. That wouldn't make sense. So I think what I'm going to do is go up the fishing pole, come down and go to the outside of that mast or the PVC pipe into the 4 to 1 and then have my 5 feet 9 inch wire coming out and then we'll put it on the rig expert and see what kind of SWR we're getting. All right, let me go ahead and get that set up. All right, so using this fishing pole, this crappy pole, 
The 25 foot wire is a little long for it, okay? Because I believe the crappy pole, I think I put it up before, I think it's 23 feet. So what I did in a tradition, Callan fashion, I left a little rollover at the top there. You see that wire hanging down? So I don't know if that's gonna mess me up or not. But, just leave it hang down there. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna mess me up or not, but it, it, poss it very possibly could. So, I didn't want to get the DS Commander on. I know I could pull on that. Okay, so I'm going to put the 4 to 1 unknown on here and cut a wire at 5 feet 9 inches for 20 meters and see if we can't tune it up anyway. Alright guys, so I got my wire cut. I got my 9 to 1 unknown. Okay. So what we're going to do now is simply connect the red, if you can see this, the red side to the driven element and then the, don't think this is counterpoise, think of this as the other side of the dipoles is how um, Ditwit, which I hate that name Ditwit because this guy is a YouTube and a CW and a ham radio genius so I'm not going to tell you his real name. Put a comment below and, and ask Ditwit for his real name, he can tell you. But yeah, he's a really good guy there. So, all right. So we're just going to wrap these because this is a test. I have no idea. I have not tried this before. I just told my wife I wanted to come out and do it. So we're going to see what happens here. Okay. Yeah, so think of this as the other half of the dipole, not so much as a, um, don't think of it as a, it's still pretty heavy there. How can I get this to stay up there? Maybe pull under this piece of tape here. How about that? That'll work. So, yeah, don't think of this as a counterpoise as much as it's just another piece of the dipole. Now I'm just going to pull it right back here behind it. Just lay it on the ground, okay? Now, the real magic happens. If I can get a, a, a good match with this, if I can, look what I did to my wire. Can you see this? Look at this mess. Make sure you can see this wire. Look at this thing. Look at this. What the heck? I gotta fix that when I get home. Anyway. Not right now. I'll do that later. Not a big deal. If I can get a good SWR, I'm hoping to use the QMX because Mr. Ditwit told me that he is a he really, really loves QRP. So Alright. Let's get some coax on there and see where we're at. I'm excited to see this too because I have no idea if this is going to work. If I don't get a great match on it, what I'm going to do is I am going to use my G90 and try to tune it. So, I mean, I obviously, I have a bunch of antennas in the car. You guys know that. A lot of antennas in the car I can use. I could throw up the JPC-12 pretty quickly. Get that up in the air and, and activate. But I haven't started yet, so I uh, I figured what I figured was do a little antenna work with you guys today, with uh, my YouTube friends, and we'll see where we're at with this antenna. I'm trying to find my rig expert here in my car, in my car of jalopy mess. I'm using the rig expert. The AA30 that I was sent. Okay, I'll set the frequency. It's already set to 14. Okay, that's good. So we're going to leave it set to 14040. Okay, that's where I like to operate CW anyway. Put the coax over here and hope for the best.
I don't know what I'll get on this thing, but again, I just threw this together pretty quick, so we'll see what happens here, but see if it's usable anyway. Because for the QMX, you have to have a pretty good SWR for a QMX to work. I found anything below 1.5 would be good. Yeah, it's shown a 2.1. So if you can see this here, let's see if you can see this, guys. 2.1. Okay, so 2.1 which isn't bad for a piece of wire, but we want to get it lower than that. How can we lower it? Should we cut a little bit off the feed element? Let's see. Let's try to do a sweep and see if it is actually uh, too long or too short. Two point one, two point one is showing that there. You know what? I think I'm going to get the rig expert out to find out where this is actually sitting. This this doesn't actually tell me, or if you guys know how to tell like what frequency it's hitting on here, I would love to know that because I don't know how that works. So I got to break out the rig expert. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm breaking out the uh, Nano VNA because this will tell me better what frequency it's sitting at uh, because I don't know how to use the other one. I guess I need some training. So if anybody wants to train me, say, hey, Jack, we'll train you for sure. All right, that'd be great. All right, let me hook this thing up real quick and see what I get on here. Again, this is my whopping $50 nano VNA, which which I like. It works well. All right, put that there. Put this here so I can see if it's, what frequency it's actually hitting. That might help me determine where I'm sitting. It looks like That's kind of weird. It's showing a 1.2 on here, but it's showing it's like 10 megahertz. So that's like 30 meter band, huh? Hmm. How about that? Let's recall and put it in a 20 meter band. So it's showing me actually 1.6 across the bands. If I go back to where we were, well, 1. 1. 1.6 right there. But if you look at this thing, I don't know if you guys can see it's Nano VNA or not, but I'll try to get a view of this. If you look, it's pretty flat, clear across the band, okay? So I'm kind of wondering now if if my camera's not going to fall back over here what to do with that 1.6 at 1440 is what it's showing I mean, it could be 1.8 I'm thinking 1.6 but it's funny because if I go back I go back, let's go back to recall, go the whole spectrum, because now it's showing me, fourteen, see it's two point oh at fourteen one thirty. But what's really interesting on the 30 meter band, 30 meter bands 1.2 on 30. Hmm. 
That's really interesting. 1.2 on 30. If I go up here back to 20 meters, it's showing a 2.0 at 14,130. 14,130. You know what? Huh. I think I'm going to hook the QMX up and see if I can't work 30 meters. Then I'll try to, I don't know if, what I need to do with this thing. I don't know if I need to, I don't know if the, if it's too long. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't get it. All right, guys. Anyway, so that is the antenna currently in its glorious configuration there. And, uh. I'm going to see if I can make some contacts. Maybe I'll get up on 30 first. I mean, I do have somewhere to be today, so I can't be out here all day playing radio. I, you know, um, going to go out and hang out with a couple other ham operators today, which is always fun. But, yeah, I don't really know if I would have to... If I would have to cut some of the... The ground part off would make it more in tune with 14. Or if you have to take off more of the driven radial. I don't know. All right, I'm going to put it up anyway and see what I can do here. So, And uh, I'll come back in when I'm finished and let you know because I don't film the full activations. But we're going to go with this. Trying to get some sun in me here. There we go. All right, guys. Well, the Poda Challenger from Ditwit, who I told you was a very smart man. Uh, it actually worked great. <laughs> I had to go with what I had. You've seen it tuned up. And the SWR was pretty good on 30 meters. So I got on 30 meters and I sat out at the park today and activated within 23 minutes. Uh, all up and down the East Coast, so it is working well. And I figure if it's working on 30 meters and has a good SWR, the, the ground half of the dipole, I guess, would be a little long, I think. So I'm going to trim it off here and play around. I already activated, so I'm good to go on 30 meters. And like I said, in 23 minutes, that's not bad at all. It's pretty good activation. It took longer to actually build and put the antenna, which still, now that it's pre-cut, it wouldn't take that long at all. And being even folded over at the top, it's working fine. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you get out there and build this uh, Poda Challenger. Uh, it's 25 foot up, so 25 foot of wire. And if you want to get on 20 meters, it's 5 feet 9 inches of ground half. Not really ground radial. There's only one wire on the ground. So, But thanks for watching it. Um, thanks to my buddy Ditwit. Who I'm not going to tell you his real name. You can ask him for his name as comment. Better yet, go to his channel. Watch his video. It was the last video they just put out on the Poda Challenger that... He actually built it with a telescoping whip, but I showed today you could build it with a water. Very inexpensive. It's effective. It works. Take care, everybody. This is Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango. W3CT. This is my ham radio journey, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, why not? Hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And I will hopefully catch you on the airways. Take care, everybody. And I'll talk to you next time. 73s.